Do you remember the episode when I said, where did the Bills go in the first and the second round? Uh-huh. Do you know what you said to me? Linebacker, wide receiver. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> that was you. Okay. I, I said running back Ooh. in the first two rounds. I said running back and tight end. But this was like... Do you know why I said that? No. Do you know who you said? No. The first two rounds for the Buffalo Bills, if you had to select two positions, free agency notwithstanding, two okay. positions... In your mind, the top two positions that they that if they drafted, you'd be like, okay, those are the top two needs on this team. What, what, what would they be? Tackle and tackle. <laughs> oh, right, well. What do they do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Defensive tackle and offensive do tackle. Do 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 do. Don't forget to hit. Ah, good job. <laughs> you know I was kidding, right? You were referencing right and left tackle, though. I know. Yeah, I was referencing right and left tackle, Didn't but you I mean, know that. No. That's true. <laughs> For the Bills, the easiest thing to do is just go out and get a bunch of linemen because you didn't, you don't know what's going to be there in the draft. And I don't really think they had a whole lot of intention on drafting an offensive tackle in. Early. in yeah, in the top ten picks. If they traded back, I think it became a target for them. But they pre, they'd seen pretty dead set that, that they thought Oliver might be there. Mm -hmm. You know, and I gotta give it to a lot of the draft analysts. They were, a lot of them said Oliver was gonna be there at nine, and, and there he was, right? Nobody called the Giants doing what they did. But it's easy for guys to fall when you got the Giants and the Raiders at the top of the draft doing God only knows what to figure out who they're gonna select. We talked about the possibility if the Bills if the Bills were going to trade up. <laughs> the thing that made me laugh too about the draft is that nobody wanted to trade with the Raiders. No, they, they like got stuck into that pick. Yeah, why trade up? Because they're going to help your guy fall. Yep, <laughs> that was the whole idea. We were floating the idea of trading Shaq Lawson mm -hmm. uh, to the Raiders to move up, and what did they end up doing anyway? Yeah, they drafted him to Clemson defensive end. Clemson defensive end. We had one for you. Yeah, I know. No, I know. But getting back to Ford and um, getting back to Ford and Oliver. Yeah. Your first two picks. Um, obviously fills uh, multiple needs. If you if you guys didn't see, we did a we did an Oliver video. It's going to be up here. You guys can check that out. We did that kind of like a month before the draft. Yeah, or something like somewhere that. around there. But um, the thing is, one thing that we highlighted in that video was you know, it was a very interesting point. You, if you draft Oliver, you can wait to draft a linebacker because right. he satisfies two positions on your team. Right. If you have Oliver up there um, on your front four, you can go nickel with Milano and Edmonds, and you don't have to blitz. Right. So that puts a lot of pressure just on the offensive side of the ball. And the one thing that I love about the Oliver pick, everyone was up in arms about Latula. Mm -hmm. Now, I... You and I have talked about this before. I'm in complete agreement that Latulale is not going to have eye-popping stats. Nope. He's not going to have stats that are Aaron Donald-esque. No. Nope. Um, that being said, what is the main thing that he does well? He eats up two people yep. every play, which means you're going to single up Oliver next to him. Yeah, so what that does is you look across the line, right? Yep. Got, Hughes is now singled. Lawson yep. or Murphy is now singled. Oliver is singled. It's a numbers game because it's what it is. It's five against four. Yeah. So, uh, Latulale, you know, allows you to be a little bit more creative with your pass rush. Absolutely. You know, no, and, no question. Yeah, and and that's exciting, right? Because I we I used to love the Jim Schwartz defense that just ran four at you all day long. Mm -hmm. The cold front. Right. Yeah. yeah. I I love that idea, but again, you're. I understand that you still had some of the same playmakers on this defense, but I mean, we're years removed. Like we're talking years down the road now yeah. since the cold front. So, yeah. um, you know, it's. I thought the Oliver pick uh, was a, was a smart football pick because he's the type of athlete that is going to be able to generate pass rush from the inside, and that's what you need. You need pass rush from the inside, and even when he's not on the inside, even if they were to slide him to the end, if they rotate Phillips in, or if they rotate Harrison in, he's still. He's still going to be single covered because yeah. Latula is still going to be there. And the thing about Oliver is that he has the power to 
if he gets double, he's okay. Yeah. He's not going to get washed. Right. Let's say you do a rotational defensive front where you bring in Phillips for Latule and you have Oliver there. You know, well, yeah, he's going to get doubled in that, in that Either instance. Phillips. Yeah. I mean, those guys, the, both of those guys can push the pocket pretty well. Sure. They're, they're manimals. Sure. Uh, but you, have, you, to, you have to imagine that the early in the season, Oliver is going to be the one that sees double teams. Do you want a single up star? Well, no, when stars off the field. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm saying when stars off the field. And you know what, though? He could, he could, fill, he could fit that mold. Mm-hmm. That's fine. So that's why I like it, because it gives your defense more options as far as you have to account for where Oliver is. I mean, some people even compared him to Aaron Donald. I mean, right. the kid hasn't played a NFL snap yet. I don't want to go that far. Well, I, agree. I like that that's his ceiling. That's well, great. I think there's a lot of comparison to his measurables, his combine performance. But, I mean, you could do that with any player and say, well, this guy's the next. You know, you're, you're right. It's a little hard to jump to that conclusion and that statement yeah. without, I mean, they just sewed his nameplate on his jersey. You know, like... <laughs> it, was, it wasn't a sewing a Canton patch. Right, exactly. You know, let's... let's I, I love the pick, and for the way that the draft played out, I think it was the right pick and the perfect fit for, perfect, uh, fit for Buffalo. Mm-hmm. He seems to really want to be here. Oh, yeah. Which I love, you know. I, I'm definitely... The first 24 hours he was. That was amazing. Yeah, it's awesome. The one thing it does tell me a little bit, though... Because the, the Bills declined Shaq's option, yes. right? Jerry Hughes is on the last year of his deal. So they've, they've rebuilt the interior of the line. So do they view, and this is probably a topic for another day, do they view defensive end like cornerback? Or it's kind of, you just, you get the right pieces in place, right? You get the foundation of what you need. Like they lock down their safeties and then their corners, they just like, they just keep bringing in new ones. Doesn't matter. Just as long as we have our safeties, we're okay. Is, is, the defense built a similar way where they lock down that defensive tackle position. They're like, well, defensive end, no, we'll, we'll, it's not hard to, we'll find, we'll find guys. Well, if you're talking about it being led by McDermott, mm-hmm. we know from his history in Carolina, other than Julius Peppers, he's just had rotational guys. Yeah. You got Addison there, you got Charles Johnson, you got other guys that are just rotational, serviceable players. Right. You don't have any big impact guys. Good athletes. Yes. Good yes. athletes, but. This could this by the time this comes out, mm-hmm. it could be a different switch if they sign Clowney or Hansa. It could okay. be very different. But it, it it'd be similar to what you were talking about because okay, they're just getting guys to fill in and they'll rotate yeah. them every couple of years. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Um, which which is something they could do. I, I like it. I've always been a big proponent of if you have your studs in any sport mm-hmm. down the middle. Yeah. You, baseball. You're catch, be fine. catch your pitcher center field. You're good. Um, you know, but if you're talking about from a football standpoint, now you have, what'd you do first? You got Hyde and Poyer. Mm-hmm. Then you got Edmonds. Yep. Now you got Latulale and Oliver right in the middle. Uh-huh. In the center of that defense, you have everything, which forces teams to be, you're taking away options for the offense, uh-huh. basically, when you do that stuff. So yep. that's what I'm more, that's what I'm more uh, a, a big fan of. Not so much the skill set of Oliver that I like. It's the fact of what he does for the people around him. Uh-huh. Now, guys can make more mistakes because he's going to cover things up being in there, being right in the front. Right. So he could probably generate pressure, which alters a pass of a quarterback where if a, if a corner is getting beat, uh-huh. he can make up ground to make a play on the ball. Yeah, the learning curve on a defensive tackle is very different than the learning curve on oh, like a yes. tight end. Or, oh, yes. you know, So there's some picks that are going to look not as good as Oliver right out of the box, but that's because the defensive tackle as a whole a little bit easier to transition from college to the pros. I mean, the terminology yeah. is all very complicated. I'm not going to tell you that that's not. But I'm talking about the on-field play. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit more, you know, drop-in starter. Yes. You know, yeah. with uh, with Oliver at nine. There's some things about him that, that I'm not in love with as a player. But there's more that I love than, than I don't. Like, it's you look at that draft board and who is there. I mean... Who else are you going to take? Yeah, his name is Circle Star. You do whatever you got to do to get him. And um, I would have loved to have been in that draft room when Daniel Jones went to the Giants. And everybody went. Because now you're doing the numbers. You're sitting there seven, eight, nine, right? You got seven, eight, nine with Hawkinson, Allen, and Oliver all on board. Yeah, you're sitting there going. We're not moving anywhere. Yep. 
Come to Papa. <laughs> Come to Papa. <laughs> That's so we, if you're the Bills, you got Josh Allen, TJ Hawkinson, and Ed Oliver up there. Tell me how either of those picks are, any of those picks are bad picks. They're not. None of them are bad. No. None of them are bad. Each one of them makes your team instantly better. They instantly become starters. They're, uh, yeah, no problems. No problems. This draft felt, felt perfect for Buffalo in the beginning part. And it's not like they weren't trying to move up. They made they made calls to try and move. Oh, yeah. They got calls yeah. to try and move back. And what the, the Bengals one pick, was intriguing because they I were know. getting 37 and 40. Can you imagine what they would have did with 11, 37, and 40? Yeah. Drafted 11. Who drafted 11th? Um, the Bengals The Bengals kept that pick. And yeah. they took um, they took alignment. Okay. Oh, um, they took, um, oh, is that Jonah Williams? Yes. Yeah. Would uh, you have been course. mad? Like, no. No, I wouldn't, wouldn't have been, have been mad. mad about that. <laughs> and then they would have had 37 and 40. Right. You want to look over what those were? 37 and 40? Well, 40 was. Well, 40 was Buffalo's pick. Yeah. And they traded. They traded up to 38. Yeah, they traded two spots to go up and get Cody Ford. So they would have, can you imagine them landing Ford and Williams in one pick, in one round? I don't think they would have done that. You don't think so? No. It would have been intriguing, though. No, I don't think they would have done da- that. Dawkins would have been packing his bags. I know, right? <laughs> it's kind of like when Joe Flacco unfollows the whole franchise on Twitter. <laughs> what a jerk. What a little baby. You drafted Locke, I'm done. Yeah. Stop it. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> That's the equivalent of taking your ball and going home when you unfollow your franchise on social media. Come on. That's what we're doing now? He's in his 30s. Grow up, Joe. That's what I mean. (laughs) You went to Delaware. Well, he went to Pitt initially. And then he went to... He transferred to Delaware. 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 Um, Is this a... It's a Wayne's World Wayne's World reference. Yeah. Hi, I'm in Delaware. Delaware. Um, no disrespect to any of our fans from Delaware. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we have any fans in Delaware. It's a small place. Tra- it's the size of a golf course. I know. Traffic sucks. <laughs> <laughs> the Oliver pick I loved, right? Mm-hmm. But the panic that they had when they couldn't trade up to get Cody Ford. Because they, I, I'm really curious to know what their board looked like between Colt Ford and all the other tackles. Because it couldn't have been close, right? I think Little. Because Little went right before him. That's well, what made them make the trade. Well, I understand that, but they were trying to Carolina. trade up. They were trying to trade up to get Cody Ford before Carolina's pick. They wanted to jump Carolina because they knew they needed a tackle. They couldn't jump ahead of Carolina. So if they were okay with Ford or Little, they wouldn't have been trying to move up. And then after Carolina picked... Well, they weren't fine with Little. They were only fine with Ford. Well, that's what I'm saying. Is I would oh, the like drop-off. I would like yeah. to know the difference that they had well, between yeah. Ford and Little. Yeah, because they thought... They, obviously, they thought Ford was the better player because he thought Ford was going to go to Carolina. Right. And it's interesting to know how well he knows Marty Herney mm-hmm. from his days working in, the, yeah. in Carolina. Yeah, he's Because they tackle. need a tackle. They're going to take one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. They took Little. And the look on Bean's face... When picks in, they took little. <laughs> it's awesome. The, the sheer shock and elation on his face because, like, it's it's such a fun look. I mean, getting getting over to Ford. Where does he play? I mean, you Where? immediately get a right tackle starter in the second round. Which is the whole purpose, right? The whole idea is to get starters in the first, second, and hopefully third rounds. That's what you're trying to do. Yep. You can get guys that you believe are starters for your team. And they traded up two picks. That tells you how much they wanted for it because they jumped two picks. And gave up a fourth rounder. And gave up a fourth rounder to do it, right? So, again. To what? Oakland. <laughs> Thanks. Just peeing in the wind. <laughs> Just peeing in the wind. You trade up to get Ford, and uh, they really like Ford. Because, I mean, they instantly start start him at right tackle. Because you really didn't have a right tackle. You had Niseki at right tackle. He's on a two-year deal. Are you really committed to Niseki? You're paying him up. What are you giving him up for? He's 33 years old, number one. Right. Number two, 
You ready, you ready for the pipe bomb? Give it to me. What's, what's, what's to stop them from starting forward and left? Even, oh, though he has one, even though he has one season at right, what's to stop him from playing left? Nothing. They're interchangeable. Yeah, it's, and the truth is, when, and this is me personally, people might disagree with me. I think Ford moves faster and better laterally than Dawkins did coming out of Temple. So, when I watch tape of Dawkins and Ford, I think Ford moves better than Dawkins does. That was my concern about Dawkins coming out of Temple was he's going to play guard because he, you know, waddles like a duck when he's jumping outside. He's, he's just not fast going outside. And then when he was next to Richie, he was okay. But then last year it was not to Richie anymore. He was next to whoever was playing left well, guard Ryan for the Bills. Lucas. Right. And there was there were some problems, mm -hmm. right? So I think Ford moves better. So would I be upset to see Ford at left tackle? No. No, I wouldn't be. If if I mean, we bang the drum of Dawkins playing playing guard, and that's all right. That's fine. Yeah. I mean, if I had to pick a consolation prize, right tackle is fine. Yeah. For Dawkins. But the way that the NFL is shaping up right now, it seems that if it's if it keeps on this path, the way the NFL is going, right and left, it, it's just going to be tackle. Yeah, it You're is. Not, it's not going to matter. It's just speed rushers on both exactly. sides. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, the, yeah. the, the, I mean, they, you have a, a position called edge now. Yeah. In the draft. Like edge rushers. Oh, yeah. They need a couple <laughs> edge guys. There was an outside linebacker at DN. Chill yeah. out, will you? Right. But the problem, the thing is, now... You have to be equally versed on both sides anyway. So there's nothing, re it just depends on uh, whichever guy is your two starting tackles, your two best tackles, which one is better, you put them on the blind side. Well, That's you, fine. And you know what's gonna end up happening is, as you know, cause the edge rusher is, you're absolutely right, it's a dedicated position in college now where you're taking guys who are 6'1", and, and are fast, and all, 6'1", 6'2", and all they're doing is just rushing, rushing the quarterback. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea behind that is to is to expose a taller, heavier, slower tackle. So what's going to happen? Your tackles are starting to, they're going to start going a little bit this way, and then they're going to start going a little bit this way. And your tackles are going to go from these guys who are 6'5", 6'6", 320, to 6'4", 300, 6'4", 290. You're going to start to see, because the college game is all about speed. And, and at some point, mm -hmm. we all know that this impacts the NFL. It gets infused, yeah. It does it at some point eventually. So you're going to start seeing tackles really becoming smaller and thinner in frame because they control these guys' weight in college. They, yeah. They say, this is your number. Here's your diet plan. Here's your workout regimen. Hit your number or you don't play. So you're going to see tackles yeah. start start thinning out. So we're going to – I mean, we talk about all the time with – defensive ends and linebackers oh well they got to put a little meat on him cornerbacks well they got to put a little meat on him you know his body's not his, his frame isn't fully built they're going to sit start saying that stand, saying that about tackles soon but there's a max of <clears throat> what the human body can in, endure oh absolutely I mean, you know what I'm saying? but the interesting part does it does it really start to take focus of what's going on at one bill's drive though you you bring in six new offensive linemen yep. you draft one if you're planning on shuffling these guys around, let's say, for instance, they, they decide to keep Dawkins at left and they put Ford at right tackle, which is fine with me. Right. You want to protect Allen's blind side. Mm -hmm. You got two veterans behind you right. that know how to pick up a blitz and or help out any kind of tackle. Yep. So the transition of, why'd they sign Gore? Oh, wait, this is why they signed yeah. Gore. Yeah, um, because it's a new offensive line. Yeah, so and with a new offensive line, you need to you need to keep Allen upright. So the best thing to do is to bring in a running back who can pick up a blitz. So even if you think Dawkins is the weaker tackle of the two, you could still put him at left, and you have a running back over there to protect his blind side. Right, so it's not a big deal. Like, yeah, that's not, that's, that's a fair point. That's, that's not what I'm worried point. about. Right, uh, but could we at least in pen put Dawkins Morse? And forward as the three, and then the bloodbath of guards going to be. That's going to be other. a battle. That's going to be a battle. Yeah, I think Ford walks in as the immediate starter at right tackle. Can, is he going to get snaps at left? Sure. Mm -hmm. He's going to get snaps at left. If something goes, if Dawkins gets hurt, can Ford play left? Yeah, he can. And then, but I mean, that's why you have Niseki. Niseki's right? your insurance policy for right tackle. Right. Well, to, no, because to, he played Niseki played left and right. I know. So, 
But what I'm saying is, let's say Dawkins gets hurt in the game, you're not pulling forward to put him at left. And no, 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 no. I never... just don't want people that if Dawkins goes down and Niseki comes in to play left tackle, people go, oh, well, there's our new left tackle for the next six weeks. No, that's not, that might not be what happens. No. You know, Ford might move over that week in practice. Niseki's you know? a, a Trent Brown light. Yeah. And I'm not talking about his weight. I'm just saying, yeah. like, he's, I like, he's a neutral sweet the, version of Trent Brown. I really like the Niseki signing. He's going to okay. be. He's going to be an above-average player at both positions, and well, the thing and that's was, fine. what we talked about with the draft, the, the urgency of them to move up, right, to get Ford. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't, I, I don't, I don't call it so much urgency. It's a guy they wanted, mm-hmm. and I understand that. But you still had, you still have, you know, insurance policy in Niseki. That's why you went and got him. If they didn't get Niseki in the offseason or sign him. As their insurance policy, they may have wanted to trade back up into the first round to get Ford. Yeah, because they didn't they didn't know if he was going to go. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a really uh, a, a I think that's a great thing to highlight for the Bills because you're right that free agency period where they were able to build an entire team through free agency allowed them the, allowed them the option to be patient, mm-hmm. right? It did. Now, even so, some years the Bills wouldn't have been able to afford to give up a fourth round pick. No. no you know, no. it's some years you don't have that you don't have that flexibility. The Bills had plenty of flexibility. Well yeah. And they didn't can, overspend on anything. Yeah, you came into the draft twenty five million and you had seventy three guys in your roster. Right. You have With so ten draft much. picks. Exactly. Yeah. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. Um, from a setup standpoint, the Bills were set up wonderfully well for this season. I am still surprised they didn't take a wide receiver. Right, that's the one thing that still I walk away from the draft, and I'm like, ah, I don't, I'm not worried about it. Really, that doesn't bother you at all. I mean, that I mean that's away from this conversation, but yep. the the fact still remains the Bills were set up incredibly well, like incredibly well. Mm-hmm. You couldn't have asked for a better position for them to be in, and they didn't trade back. They kept nine, so I lost a bet. They didn't draft a wide receiver in the first two rounds, so I lost a bet. It's okay. I feel like I'm about to go into diabetic shock of every bite I take. 